Hello, welcome to a presentation on the notable civil engineers throughout history, brought to you by Matthew Mullen. In this presentation, we will take a look at a few of the important men and women who have shaped our current infrastructure through their notable contributions. While some of the names of the individuals will be familiar to you, others will not, but you will most likely recognize the works they are responsible for. Before highlighting individual engineers, it is worth noting that ancient civilizations are responsible for designing some of the most world-changing advances in civil engineering. The achievements of these civilizations are often associated with the civilization as a whole, rather than with a particular individual. Whether it is the structural advances of the Egyptians with the building of the Great Pyramid, the practice of sustainability by reuse and recycling by the Greeks as shown with the Parthenon, or the ability to develop order distribution by the Romans by way of the aqueducts. These past societies have laid the groundwork of inspiration for future civil engineers of our world. The first engineer we will take a look at is the Roman military engineer and architect Vitruvius, one of the most renowned civil engineers of all time. Vitruvius served under the infamous Julius Caesar and helped advance Roman society with his works. His notoriety is due to his work De Architectura. De Ar Architectura is a 10-book manifesto that gives account to the history of architecture and engineering, as well as Vitruvius's personal views on these subjects. Vitruvius believed that successful architects and engineers would need to possess a broad understanding of all the sciences, arts, and nature. He also believed that buildings should always be three things, beautiful, stable, and useful. De Architectura has inspired countless men and women throughout history, but perhaps none more famous than the brilliant Leonardo da Vinci. Evidence of Leonardo da Vinci drawing inspiration from Vitruvius is apparent from one of da Vinci's most famous sketches, The Vitruvian Man. Da Vinci's sketch is based off of the dimensions given by Vitruvius in De Architectura of the proportions for the human body. Da Vinci makes our list, not for his Vitruvian man, but for his interest in developing civil engineer designs, such as movable bridges and canal systems. In order to obtain his first engineering commission, Leonardo proposed a design to create movable bridges. He is also credited for perfecting the canal system around Milan. Aside from designing buildings and ways to improve other structures, Da Vinci also created ways to destroy structures and designed other instruments of war. Da Vinci's brilliance was so great that many of his designs were not achievable until centuries later and some have yet to come to fruition. Another recognizable name on our list is Gustav Eiffel, most famously known for his design of the tower, which is named after him. He also designed the framework for the Statue of Liberty. These metal megastructures gave Eiffel his nickname, the Magician of Iron. Overshadowed by his two most notable accomplishments, Gustav Eiffel's contributions to civil engineering also come from his prolific bridge designs. The Garabit Viaduct, designed by Eiffel and constructed in 1884, was 540 feet long and was the highest bridge in the world at the time, standing 400 feet tall. Part of Eiffel's success designing such large structures was the result of his study and knowledge of aerodynamics. He actually used the Eiffel Tower for experiments in aerodynamics after it was built and also built the first aerodynamic laboratory. Like Gustav Eiffel, Emily Roebling was a bridged engineer. Unlike Eiffel, Roebling's name is not very well known for her engineering feats. Also unlike Eiffel, Emily did not have any formal college training in engineering. Emily worked behind the scenes on the construction of the Brooklyn Bridge, first as a team member, but eventually moved into the lead after her husband had fallen ill and was bedridden. At the time, society did not encourage women to work in the engineering field and were sometimes even banned from the field of study. As a result, Emily kept her husband listed as the lead engineer for the Brooklyn Bridge, even though the role was hers. If her husband had not fallen ill, we may never have known that Emily played such a pivotal role in the completion of such an iconic bridge. Emily is recognized on the plaque that honors the contributors of the bridge, but there are still historical accounts that exclude her altogether.
The last two individuals on our list are Benjamin Wright and John Smeaton. Smeaton was an Englishman and a member of the Royal Society. He was the first engineer to refer to himself as a civil engineer and is thus referred to as the father of civil engineering. Smeaton wanted to distinguish the field of civil engineering from the architectural and military engineering fields. Smeaton built lighthouses, bridges, canals, and even windmills. Benjamin Wright was his American counterpart and was dubbed the father of American civil engineering. He worked on the Erie, Delaware, Hudson, Chesapeake, and Ohio canals. Aside from the symbolic title of the father of American civil engineering, Benjamin was the actual father of nine children, five of which followed in their father's footsteps to become civil engineers themselves. These two father figures of civil engineering accomplished great engineering works and helped distinguish a specific field of study for others to follow after them. I would like to thank you for watching this presentation and I hope you found it both enjoyable and educational. I will leave you with a few other notable civil engineers that you may want to research further, such as George Washington Gale Farris Jr., whose name might stand out to you for both being named after the first president of the United States and whose name is also linked to the giant Carnival wheel. Fun fact, the Ferris wheel was actually America's answer to the Eiffel Tower. Thank you again and have a great day.